pause what out of vibing god hichi <laughs> hi <laughs> you will kill me one day stop <laughs> did you read your script did you read your invites you put out of vibing god Jesus, bend your lightning properly. Suck in Tani, suck in Tani. Go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh, me, I have nothing to suck in. That's why I wear free dresses. Me, I'm carrying the presence of God. It's kind of difficult. <laughs> Hi Q family, welcome to Questionga. This week I am so excited to host you yet again. My name is Penelope and welcome to your space where we inspire, we play and we live. I am super super excited to host you because we are talking about still one of the topics that I love the most, vibing God. Or some people say being vibed by god so we are going to be talking about how god vibes us and how we vibe him and all those things and on set today i have one of my other favorite persons or oh, people yes this person i have known for many 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 years i shall not say how many because some of you are skilled in the art of reading edge and i shall not give our edge away right now but we have known ourselves for so long and i must say that she has a lot to do with my journey with god because she's one of those people that found me in patras and in clubs and said come here child come here you need jesus so welcome with me diana angwech you're very welcome to question you, you said the <laughs> other people who are the rest they're oh, okay, you're my only favorite person <laughs> forgive me i Thank need to retake you. that She's my only favorite person, especially for today. You're welcome. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Yeah, your other own favorite person. That qualification <laughs> is not accepted. So I yeah. have been introducing people on the show as my favorite people. Everyone who comes here, I say you're my favorite That's person. Polygamy. So, uh, absolute polygamy. We shall. <laughs> We shall discuss polygamy <laughs> another day. Please tell us who you are. I know, I know you deeply. But the people watching and, <laughs> and listening to us do not know who you are, who's Diana, uh, what does she do, why is she talking about God, mm, yeah. Yes, why is she talking about <laughs> God? Well, I'll qualify, she doesn't know me deeply, she just knows me. Deeply, that's, every that's secret. That's interesting one, <laughs> absolutely not. So Diana, Diana, whew, where do I start? I feel that I have so much to say about Diana, but... um. Diana is our creative, I think, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely principled, uh, God-loving uh, lady who wants to take the world by storm. Yeah. <sighs> Have you people heard, <laughs> like, yes. taking the world by storm? Yes. Is that literal or is it because, well, man, I'm even literal. afraid? <laughs> Whether it's figurative or literal, I came to fulfill my purpose in mm. this world. Mm. And whatever that means, I will make it happen. Mm -hmm. Or rather, the Lord will make it happen. I think that's a fairer, fairer word. The Lord will make it happen. Yes. So when I met you, Diana, you were hmm, one of those seriously spirit people. Let me tell you guys. <laughs> so you know those people they would say in school are super spirit, like the devil can't even cross. Mm. Madam over here. Oh, that's such a when lie. I met that is such a lie. <laughs> when I met her at that the university, I was literally running away from her because the person who introduced us had told me that, you know, there's this very spiritual person, uh, she's our mama at the at the law at the law school faculty and we want you to be part of the committee. I'm like, what committee? Do you people know, know who I am and the things that I do? I know I don't qualify. <laughs> But but we became friends after that, and and I mentioned in the intro that you contribute a very big percentage to my journey with God. I have admired how you relate with God. I've admired the simplicity with which it comes, because also in as much as you are introduced as a spiritual person, I found you very playful with God. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to know how you do that. How are you able to... 
maintain the balance, you know, be very serious with seeking God mm. and loving him and knowing him and yet be very unserious with how you do it. Okay. Uh, right. And 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 <laughs> I don't mean unserious in a bad way. I mean yeah. unserious in the sense that it's not this scheduled thing that uh, I'm going to pray seven times a day. I'm going to now it's time to talk to God. Nobody talk to me. Now it's time to fast 30, 40 years or 50 days in a whole year. Well, like, that is not healthy. It's not. <laughs> no, it's spiritual. <laughs> it's not that serious, and yet it's really deep. How do you, how do you find the balance to do that? I don't necessarily think it's a balance. I think it's about choice. At the end of the day, mm. there's something you said that that got my attention. Um, the, 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 the ability to be quite serious mm. in matters that uh, discipline, mm. the disciplines with God and also still be uh, light-hearted. Oh, wow. I think and it's really serious. about character. And still be cool, <laughs> maybe that's the word. <laughs> like I think it's <laughs> really about character. Many times we are told how to approach God yes. when we give our lives to Christ. We are told- Be humble, we are told approach the throne yeah. with but confidence, you should, you but should, you should humility as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that it's really about personality. God made each of us mm. uh, very different. Mm. So we have a unique personality that mm -hmm. sets us apart from everybody else. And so some people are cheeky, some people are quite uh, calm. I remember, as you said that, I was thinking about our life in prayer. Mm. Uh, some of us were quite loud in the prayer room. That's <laughs> you. Uh, some Lord. of us were quite calm in the prayer room. <laughs> No, but I, I hope everyone <laughs> from law school is watching because loud but me and you. But we can't even see now who's ah, loud. Than okay. Yet. No, <laughs> seriously, I think that we 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 sometimes mistake our, our ability to be loud as passionate. Mm, yes. And um, what sorts that out usually in life is the things that we go through. Mm -hmm. It it sorts out whether we are a devotion to God is real mm -hmm. or if it's just on the surface. Mm -hmm. I think my ability to re relate with God is just about my personality. The way you approach him mm. is the way, uh, the same way the, well, it's not the same way that you approach yeah, him at yeah. the end of the day. Of course, there are, there are the things that we don't take lightly and things that we don't play about. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are matters of discipline, and I like the, the saying that God's love, uh, it's unconditional, mm. but there are conditions yes. when you come. Yes. It's very unconditional, yes. calm as you are, <laughs> but when you come to the table, you will find certain you, set yeah, principles and you that have you to grow with follow. it, okay. and I appreciate that. So mm. you, you come to God as you are, with your uniqueness, with something about you that separates you from mm -hmm. the other, because each of us was made differently. In mm -hmm. his, I like that he says we're all made in his image, mm. and he made them mankind. Yes. So each of us is sort of an image of who God is at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that uniqueness is what you must see as beauty in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And because of that beauty, you approach him the way you want. So if you're loud, if you're calm, if you <laughs> are uh, playful, whatever it is, I think God appreciates diversity. Mm -hmm. And we should too. And that for me has helped me throughout my spiritual journey. Yeah. I don't just... Um, go with the disciplines as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I learned, to, I, I found I found a friend in God. Mm -hmm. I found a friend in God. I don't, I, he's, he's a judge, he's a father. I don't forget that. Mm. And he'll clamp down when he will. Mm. But um, these other parts of him that are, that are, are very approachable uh, help me be who I am at the end of the day. Interesting. So you talked about diversity and all I can think about is that the diverse roles that you have taken on in your journey and service to God. And yeah. and I don't even know where the journey started. Maybe I know a bit of the story, yeah. but uh, it, it hasn't always been like this. It hasn't been that you have known God from the time you were born. And Supposing I have. Um, <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't known God from the time you were born and, uh, you know, served and there, there are moments to serve because some of us, uh, I mean, I, I, I boast of serving God in Sunday school because I was the girl who just made everybody keep quiet in Sunday school. <laughs> but but that, that I was doing unconsciously. It's, it's, it was a character thing. But then there's service it to God. It could have been a gift thing. That too. <laughs> There's the service to God where it's it's beyond the gifting. It's beyond the accidental service. It's I have chosen. I mm. have made the decision that I will serve God, and this is what I'm going to do. Please tell us about your journey. 
along along those lines wow. because you've been you've been youth chair at the <laughs> at the <laughs> at the All Saints Cathedral you have been mama and oh prayer dear. sec at oh LDC dear. you have you have been many things you oh have served God. God in different outfits mm. and and the, the the lessons the journey has been different for all these things please tell us just just tell us what that has been like oh my um I think, wow, that's, that's, that's <laughs> a lot, that's a lot. You go, you're making me go back in time. Yes, that's uh, the whole point of question. Unfortunately, <laughs> they come with a lot of memories that I don't need right now. But okay, wow, I came to know the Lord at a really, really tender age. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in P4. See, you weren't born in, in two. <laughs> P4 is a bit. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my mother's sisters who were staying with us at the time, my aunties, uh, took us to a church mm -hmm. and then uh, it's, it's so funny and so they, <laughs> I remember thinking uh, what is happening because you're young so you're looking up at everyone yes. who's standing and there's a lot there are a lot of things happening that you don't understand mm -hmm. so you see people hands raised uh, tears rolling yeah and you're like your we are in my, church my correlation <laughs> tears pain what is happening yeah but i remember th i think they were i don't know who what, what they were giving us bibles at that yes, time yeah and i think they made an altar call all i know is my auntie said go up and get a bible so i went up to get a bible and you gave your life to Christ. i assume i did somewhere <laughs> around there somewhere around there because they said let's get a bible i was told to go up i think my aunt just, just wanted to make the preacher feel that someone has given yeah, their life to christ yeah. and i think we were told to probably say what i have no recollection all i know <laughs> is on the way home i left the bible at a shop oh wow <laughs> it didn't even last that long no my salvation <laughs> my salvation journey began no, I'm, the, I'm bible about didn't. the bible uh, it, it didn't no, even make it home i carried the bible we got to the shop they asked us if we wanted sweets to congratulate congratulate us about what had just happened yes. i said yes so you i put my bible the on the counter and, the and stretched my hands to receive the sweets and walked happily with the sweets it was a beautiful exchange <laughs> As I, I hope that shopkeeper gave their life to christ but <laughs> from that place i think my first journey was about do's and don'ts with mm. god and mm. uh I, and that tends to turn you into somebody else yeah because yeah. you you want to dress a certain way you want to speak a certain you're, way you want to please. you're molded yeah. into a certain way and i think that was difficult the beginning what the beginning was 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 funny for me it was about he's strict he's a judge yeah. he's god yeah. do this don't do this and that happened for me from p4 to p7 mm -hmm. and then god um threw me into a single sex school mm -hmm. <laughs> that was yeah. another journey <laughs> i had never quite been with girls so that was quite so interesting. you needed the grace of the oh lord oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh my god it's interesting that my journey god has put me with women it's just interesting <laughs> I thought that God didn't love me, honestly. When I was thrown into a single why? sex school. No, I, I just Okay, I could never do single sex school because <laughs> really I love boys. I could not Okay, that do you need to qualify <laughs> that. You need to qualify but that. But I love boys. I have I have brothers. I think she means she likes I boys. I grew up just, with I boys. <laughs> I I work with boys. I love boys. I love boys. No. Yes. So I was going I went to a single sex school, but it was also a, a school that was very strict about salvation. I think for me that set me on a path mm -hmm. of what salvation really was. Yeah. And uh, you won't believe this, but I had no self-esteem. I had no confidence which, in myself. Um, I, I wasn't... Which Diana, are we talking about? I because this is not you. <laughs> I wasn't too brilliant. I couldn't speak up, by the way. I don't think I could speak up about, uh, where people were concerned. I had all these insecurities, all of them. All How? Of, because How? when you grow up in a house that has so many people, and especially when you're with boys. You grow up with boys. Your identity is lost because you're trying to be like them. I was trying. Mm. I always thought the boys were the better sex. They got away with everything. So my identity somehow got lost mm -hmm. in all that. Mm -hmm. And when I was thrown with girls, it was the first time in my life I was with so many girls. I, I And it freaked you out. I did. I really <laughs> thought my parents didn't love me. God didn't love me. I thought everybody just didn't like me. Because I was still trying. My identity had been yeah. shaped by the boys. And yeah. I was still trying. But now this was a time Now you were beginning to see yourself. Yes. And to find my identity, not just as Diana, but who I was with mm. God. Mm. And uh, so I, I, t I, I run under the simple things. Uh, let's go and do the backup for praise and worship. Let's go and do um, encouraging someone. Let's, I went to the ministries that didn't have so much drama. Yes. You know, so much <laughs> drama. 
But God has a way of yeah. sorting us out. Yeah. I think I didn't know then that I would be a leader. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't. I thought leadership was about you being brilliant, coming from the right family, mm -hmm. having the um, being absolutely knowing the right people. people, all those things. I thought that's what made you a good leader. Mm -hmm. And then I think I got into all sense a bit more, um, and the preachers began to put me at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, from then <laughs> on, all sons <laughs> put me as the leader of the, the I think, the youth the ministry. Youth. That came much later. Uh, S6 VAC, I think, um, which is among the first times I was totally leading something. Mm -hmm. And then I went into campus. I became, I got in committee. I became the mama. Then mm -hmm. I went to LDC. I was the press secretary. Then I came <laughs> out as the vice chairperson, all sons, and then mm -hmm. finally the first female. Uh, youth chairperson mm -hmm. and then I moved on and I thought that I started a women's ministry mm -hmm. that uh, that was that that was centered on mentorship mm -hmm. of young of women mm -hmm. generally because I really really desire to empower women mm -hmm. now that's coming from a child who did not feel comfortable yep. with women so a person <laughs> who God has thrown women. right in right to work with women <laughs> and then I moved on uh, and then I think I got comfortable with the fact that leadership was only going to be in the spiritual sphere yes yeah yes and God had uh, other, other plans, plans other clearly. plans that leadership <laughs> traverses just the just the spiritual sphere mm -hmm. and so in the marketplace I started a few things here and there mm -hmm. and uh, uh, leadership of course at work began in different spheres mm -hmm. then I think at some point I was head of a, a legal department mm -hmm. and well I didn't see much there but I felt a nagging in my heart to do so much more mm -hmm. than just uh, be with where you work mm -hmm. and so the Lord uh, miraculously or uh, mercifully mm -hmm. has allowed <laughs> me now to be the vice president of Uganda Law Society mm -hmm. but in all these things congratulations <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm sitting with a whole VP <laughs> please use the titles <laughs> properly okay. your excellency a whole <laughs> vice president your excellency <laughs> madam I am Aish. <laughs> <laughs> I might no. bite my tongue but wow congratulations oh, thank you my dear and qu it's quite a journey yeah. I, I, I so I, I love hearing people's God journeys because or good stories because for me that, that it's like vibing a chick that's why i said this is the art of vibing god yeah. because it's like vibing a chick today you try tomorrow oh, vibing a guy for the chicks who are vibing guys so 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 like you try today it doesn't work you mm. go back you go back and 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 god chases us all the time he's he's constantly chasing after us we are playing hide and seek he's not giving up he's there he's yeah. coming back he's coming back sometimes we are the ones chasing him i don't know where he is but i'm sure he's in the same place and we are just chasing everything else the but scripture says he likes to hide <laughs> himself <laughs> so yeah so when he hides and we are chasing him it's it's, it's a whole chase yeah. and and you mentioned something about about purpose and identity. I, w I want us to dig a little mm. there because you're running a women's ministry. Mm. And, and one of the things I love about that ministry, I have had the privilege of attending some of her workplace fellowships, um, is that you care about carrying Christian values into the workspace. Now, you can't talk about values if you don't know who you are. Mm. Because people, people don't just wake up and say, oh, these are my values. I believe in equity and generosity and love without knowing that this is the person that I am. Mm. How did you know for sure that this is who? <laughs> because so many people struggle with purpose. How do you know for sure that <coughs> this is what I am called to do? This is who I am. This is my calling. This is my purpose. This is my calling because I was told they are different. So oh I know that there are people out there who are still struggling with these questions. How do you know your purpose? How do you know your calling? How do you tell them apart? How do you live together with them to fulfill your purpose? Oh dear. That's quite a <laughs> Those loaded are question. Four questions. I need a someone for this one. <laughs> We don't summer. have that time for us, someone. <laughs> no. We uh, shall host the VP again. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, calling is really what God call, what, what God has set out for mm. you to do. Mm. I think, I, I, for me, simply put, what God has called you to do. 
um, and fulfill your purpose. Now that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Purpose is what God gave, as in all of us got that at the beginning. We were given mm -hmm. the purpose to dominate and dominate the earth mm -hmm. and rule, mm -hmm. to be fruitful, to do all these things. So that's generally your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, of course, people love to add in, we are called to be relational with mm -hmm. God. I think mm -hmm. purpose is, for me, quite general, mm -hmm. quite general. Mm -hmm. How do you discover it? Just walk with God. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that's the only way you're going to discover it. Walk mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. I have also found that you, you need to be willing to step out and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you will make mm -hmm. mistakes. Uh -huh. Now some of us <laughs> who are afraid of failing. Everybody, I think everybody is afraid of failing. Everybody, if they're honest, everybody is afraid of failing. Mm -hmm. Walk with God. I think walk with God. Walk with God. I, I, I once asked someone, what's the best word you ever got from God? Mm -hmm. And I was expecting some uh, heaven on earth, thunder striking, yeah, lightning yeah, striking yeah. moment. And they said something that was so simple and yet so profound. And it, for me, has changed my life in the course of the last two mm -hmm, years. Mm -hmm. They said... I don't know much about what he has said, mm. but I can say God has led me. Mm -hmm. God has led me all mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. God, I have found, is not too generous with words. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you, but mm -hmm. God the Father is not too generous mm -hmm. with words from what I have found. He says, it says once, have I, uh, once I have spoken, twice, twice have I heard. Yeah. God, God doesn't speak as much as we think we want him to mm -hmm. speak, right? Mm -hmm. The word is there to guide you. The Holy Spirit is there to remind you of what you have read mm -hmm. and everything to come. But... Uh, when God leads you, the thing that he does more is he leads. Mm. He leads you. Just mm -hmm. shows you a path. Here is mm -hmm. my, this is my voice. Uh, you will hear my voice behind you. This is the way mm -hmm. walking it. Mm -hmm. He leads. And as he leads you, you will find your way. I'll say this. When I was going to become VP, um, I wondered about so many things. The mm -hmm. office of the vice president is to head the legal aid and the pro bono aspect of the society. Mm -hmm. When I started my career, I didn't know what i was going to do mm. i knew i'd done law but mm. so what mm. uh could i litigate yes mm. could i mediate yes could i do adr yes but none of it excited me mm. at all none of mm. it brought i didn't wake That's, up and thought yes, so this I is want what i want to do mm. and yet i said with a law firm and i thought mm, okay it's commercial transactions mm -hmm. okay i went into legal aid and i said mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. i i don't think this is going to be this mm -hmm. is going to be what I want. But mm -hmm. God kept me there for five and a half years mm. in one space and then another one and a half years under mm -hmm. the tutorship of somebody who was a leader in mm -hmm. the society at the time. Mm -hmm. When this cycle came around and uh, I felt a nudging in my heart mm -hmm. to stand, mm -hmm. it turns out I was going to stand for VP and the function of the VP was to head something I had served in yes. before. Yeah. Something when I was doing, that you I you had didn't trained think. for. <laughs> something I didn't think was worth it when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Something that I thought, but what is this leading to? Where is yeah. this really going? Oh, yeah. But God puts you through years of training mm -hmm. to set you in another mm -hmm. space. And so as you walk with God, he will lead you. Mm -hmm. If you're obedient enough, uh, if you continue in obedience, he will lead mm -hmm. you at the mm -hmm. end of the day. I think purpose comes forth. You will see a lot of it in hindsight mm -hmm. as opposed to see it as it comes yeah ah. but you see that's that's where the problem is right there of the trying and 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 the error and because so many people confuse gifting mm. with purpose mm. so many and and i'm sure there are many who are watching now who are saying oh my god me i can do all these things and i feel <coughs> at peace with them and god has told me the other ones then two years down the road or even less than that for some of us it has been a rude awakening yeah. I, at least I can testify to that. Of you start something, you're like, yes, go, I heard God. He said, then tomorrow you're going back and saying, God did, re did, did he, he did say? not say, he didn't, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't God. Because but today you think this moments. is the thing, then tomorrow this is the thing. It teaches you humility, but it also not, breaks you. No, and that's good, because you need it. <laughs> that's For good, what? you need it. You... <laughs> Our whole sole purpose at the end of the day is to be more like him. Mm -hmm. We are actually created to be more like him mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. the the, until you, it's less of you and more of him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then will you really find mm -hmm. who you are, what you are or who you are in life. At the end of the day, you need that breaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, everyone is going to go through it. There is no single person you can look at and admire today in God who has, for lack of a better word, arrived, and I don't think anyone has, mm -hmm 
that does not have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. There are enough mm -hmm. mistakes along mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. There are enough uh, setbacks. Then God allows all that mm -hmm. for us to see our weakness and acknowledge his strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because only then are we refined. Mm -hmm. we, are more, we are more refined in the fire than we are in good times. None of us likes the fire. <laughs> but it's the thing that shapes us and makes us that that that, that makes that gives us that gives us a reason to go on but mm -hmm. also it helps that for people it helps for the coming behind you your story is not just for you the thi when you fall into a pit it's not for you <laughs> it's not for you it's what you do with the pit ah we don't want to be in the pit it's what anyway. you do with the pit <laughs> that uh, the falling in is very very painful so so these women that you serve because you talked about women and serving women and it hasn't just started now mm. I, I think i remember even at the university you had a circle of women that you were working with what is it about women yeah. why not men because you know so many m people ask these questions they're yeah. like you're a feminist why not men mm. why are you doing work why do you run a women's organization only why do you know so i'm going to be those people today why, why are you serving <laughs> women why not men any man <laughs> any man that's not a feminist should be ashamed so <laughs> have you heard uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. first first put the other stick <laughs> say that again <laughs> No, seriously, any, I think that any man that's not a feminist should be I keep telling people Jesus was a feminist. Anyway, Christian <laughs> Will said Jesus was not a feminist, but those are Christians I will talk about another day. Oh, dear day. Lord. Anyway, so um, <laughs> why women? Why women? God has a way of using your uncomfortable mm -hmm. spaces mm -hmm. as places of ministry mm -hmm. so that you're not the one that's exalted, but yes. that he's exalted at the end. Yes. I was... Like I said, I was born where the, with, with so many boys. I knew nothing about girls. I thought women were weak, <laughs> emotional, absolutely confusing. I remember you used to say, why do you cry when you're watching a movie? What's wrong you. with you? Yeah. <laughs> so. You don't like that tone of my voice. Okay, let me, let me turn down. <laughs> so, no, I, 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 these were all emotions I associated with weakness. Yeah. But they didn't have to mean that they were weak. They didn't yeah. have to be weakness at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And it's funny that perhaps there were emotions in me yeah. that I was not willing that to you look at yeah. uh, at the end of the day. Um, so why women? Because I think God found that part that I was quite uncomfortable with mm -hmm. and used everything I thought was weak for me to find to strength strong. and yeah. help somebody else say yeah. no. Yeah. Because I had a skewed image about women, mm. I want to help every woman out there to say, no, that's not your version. Mm. That's not your identity. Mm. Your mistakes don't define you. Mm. Your pitfalls don't define mm. you. Whatever you go through doesn't define you. Yeah. It's what you do with it yeah. that will help, what will tell your story mm -hmm. at the end of that day. Mm -hmm. The only person that will ever define you is God. Yeah. And you have to let him define you. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to, to say that he does and you don't let him. Mm -hmm. But you have to let him define you at the end of the day. Wow. So um, <laughs> why women? I think God gave me a heartbeat to bring up a generation of women and many. And for me, it's funny. Those that are older than me and those that are younger than me mm -hmm. to say that you're better than where you are at mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can do so much mm -hmm. more. So why women? I think it's the heartbeat that God gave me. I am one of those yeah. women, so <laughs> I can proudly say that I have walked a journey with I think you were the first people that, w well, you were among the first people that mentored me after the people that were close to me at home, like away from my family and away from my, my close immediate people. Uh, you were the first person I met at the university, and, and I love to tell people that if I hadn't met you, ha! We would be having a very interesting story today, but God would have sent someone else, yes. I guess. Yes, we would have. <laughs> the purposes God. of God can never be thwarted. That's true, but but I I, I I enjoyed learning from you. I still learn from you. Yeah. I enjoy I enjoy that relationship, and I want to talk about relationship now because one of the things that I pride in is the fact that I can wake up and make a call and and just say nothing, and you will show up. Because I know you have done it before and you will do it for me. How, how, how do you think mentoring women and building a space where women can hold each other 
H how do you think that is important for people out there? Because so many people believe I'm an island. It's my, the Bible says work on your salvation. Your salvation, not, not our salvation. Yeah. Work on it with fear and trembling. Mine. So if I'm working on it, why do I need this circle of people who are mm. holding me accountable, calling me, asking me if I prayed, if I fasted, if I... Like, even if that's not what they're asking me, my things with God are mine with God. He knows. Why am I putting yeah. them out to you? So, so yeah, what, 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 what do you have to say about that? Mentorship, but also this whole I'm an island yeah. mentality and God will speak to me if he wants to speak to me directly. He doesn't have to send yeah. me yeah. a whole army of people. Yeah. yeah. I think we, want, we must remember we are the body of Christ. Mm. We are the body of Christ. Mm. So you could be the eyes, <laughs> yeah, you could be the liver. You could be the kidneys somewhere. Someone else is the hands <laughs> yeah, and someone is the legs. We are the body of yeah. Christ. And because we are the body of Christ, we work in unison. We work in one. We are supposed to work in one accord. Mm -hmm. uh, we're supposed to be united at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. As much as we wanted, God created us to relate with him and relate with one another. Mm -hmm. He made each of us um, lack something that somebody else has that they can be able to complement yeah. us with. Yeah. And so... I don't think um, I don't think anyone should come from the place I can do it on my own mm -hmm. because guarantee you will fail. You will fail. I don't know how much Hollywood <laughs> can sell you, but it's a lie. You will fail. You will absolutely fail yeah. because God created yeah. us in that way. Mm. If we come with the body and he has given us different gifts, it's all yeah. for the building up yeah, of, the, of body. the body. And we must be cognizant of that fact. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we should never ever go to the place where we want to be alone. But I do understand also what it means to want to be alone. Because yeah. I've been there. Yeah, because people there. hurt you and people disappoint you and people <laughs> take advantage of you. And so you're like, they eh, do. They do. don't come to me with your God, Kebby. But I, I that, shall be here. <laughs> I think that God desires us to live at peace. From mm -hmm. the very creation story at the beginning, mm -hmm. God absolutely desired man to live at peace. You see all the commandments. Even after the flood, he gives Noah. He speaks about... Uh, bloodshed if you yes. shed one's blood you'll be shed yes. by another yes. because his desire is for us to live in peace our brokenness has brought us where we are mm. but i think that we learn from the master who when he was ridiculed when he was insulted mm. when he was um pushed mm. when he was uh when he went through all the suffering mm. you don't see him open his mm. mouth yeah you don't see him return an insult yeah you don't see him do all these things that we are naturally prone to do. And yeah. God is not blind that we not blind to the fact that we are naturally prone mm. to do so. Mm. He actually speaks to Noah. He, no, in Genesis, he, yeah. he says, wickedness from childhood. I said, hey, Lord, you also <laughs> knew. Oh, wickedness is from childhood. <laughs> but because we have a high priest who mm. is not unable to sympathize with our weakness, mm. yet was tempted in all ways without sin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because we have someone who has gone before us we can emulate and do that, not in our own strength, yeah. but by the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we need to allow that people will hurt. Mm -hmm. We need to allow that people will break. Yeah. Some of us have been through deep emotional pain, yeah. deep betrayal yeah. that yeah. we didn't think, you know, you begin to question, but are you really a human being? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure that I know? <laughs> are you sure that you are not a fallen angel somewhere? Oh, uh, please, <laughs> Diana. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, God <laughs> works with those moments and with you mm. to bring about beauty. Mm. And when that beauty comes forth, you're able to, to heal and bring forth purpose mm. at the mm. end of the day. Mm. So I'd, I would say to someone that, you are, first of all, you're never alone. Mm. You're like what you said at the beginning, God never lives. Mm. You're out of vibing God. He mm. never lives. My God, God can't stick. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear, he sticks. <laughs> My God, he sticks. <laughs> I can tell you as someone who told God, we are done. Yeah. Devil, we are done. Yeah. Also you. Yeah. I have taken middle ground. I discovered there's no such thing as middle ground. Mm. But I also discovered that God really never leaves you. Mm. In the place of the depth of pain, I have never had so many people have dreams mm. about me. Mm. Until I told God, let people sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Let them sleep. Yeah. They need to rest. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and, and so yeah, just people. just even to interrupt you because because when you said that all I hear is you know lukewarm people, yeah, d like you you can't be in the middle. You're, there is you're, no middle you're neither hot, you're not yeah, nor no cold. You're ground. just there. And and I just want us to talk a bit about that because when people hear this whole journey of yours, they they they'll be like, hey, Mama, 
Yeah. Like she has not had a hard time with oh God. Oh dear. Because I mean, from P4, me penny P4, what was I doing? And now we shall not even go to think about that because <laughs> oh dear. this girl has lived her <laughs> life. But no. <laughs> so from P4, when people hear that journey, they're like, you've had zero fights with God. You've had yeah. no breakups. You've had no cup breaking moments. You've had no moments of, by the way, no. We are not talking this week. Just sit those ends. Let me be here. Yeah. When I'm done with my anger, I'll deal with you. Yeah. Because I get those moments. And, and, and someone recently told me, by the way, it's, it's dishonorable to tell God to first chill those ends. And I said, Wanange, clearly I'm still growing as a Christian because we me, I will tell God first take a yeah. seat. <laughs> you first sit there because right now my head is not working and it's your fault. So first busy. <laughs> I think we must. How do um, you, how, how, how? Oh my because God. you've said you got Everybody. to a place where I, God was here. Like God stay there, devil stay there, I'm here. <laughs> how do you get to that place and how do you get out? Most oh importantly. Dear. I think the easiest way to get there is sin. The easiest way to get there is sin mm -hmm. and disobedience from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. The scripture is true, the arm of flesh will fail you. Yes. Well, that's a clear <laughs> song. But the arm of flesh will fail you. I think the easiest place way to get there is sin. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you loosen boundaries, mm -hmm. the more things happen to you, mm -hmm. the more the consequences of sin bite mm -hmm. and sting. Mm -hmm. And God isn't blind to them. Yeah. He sees, he, he has knows. said the wages of sin, sin is, is death. death. So yeah. even if you're not dying <laughs> physically, something you is will dying. Die. You yes. will die. So mm -hmm. the easiest place to get, the easiest way to get there again is sin. Um, then when you get to that place consequences of sin are more dire than we actually make them yeah we make them yeah. we, we make them out to be yeah you hit rock bottom and then realize how did i get here mm. and if you look back honestly you know how you see the slippery <laughs> slope you yes. started to allow yes. you say to allow coming and when you get to that place only God can pick you up. Mm. Only God can pick you mm. up. And you are more thankful for the scripture that says he'll never leave you or forsake yeah. you. Yeah. Sometimes, of course, even in your sin, there are things you don't want to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And people yeah. cause them to happen yeah. to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, sometimes it's a lot of people's actions that bring you so much pain mm. and, uh, and, 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 um, and heartache. Mm. And, in those moments, so it's either something you've done or something that someone has done yeah. to you that brings you to that place. And you need at that point more than anything to just surround yourself with believers. Mm. It's easy to go the opposite direction. Yeah. Actually, no, it works. You're, more like, <laughs> you're more likely than not it's cool. to go the opposite direction. It's comforting. Why are you angry? <laughs> You're angry, but you see, that's your perception of God that's yeah. making you angry at yeah. him. You're angry because you thought he should have protected you. Yeah. You're angry because you thought he should have shouted and this would have stopped. Yeah. You're angry because he could have just he could have done. not made it happen. I, I ask those <laughs> questions, but I ask again, where was he when Eve was eating the fruit mm. and the serpent was speaking? Mm. Where was he when... Um, his son was dying on the cross, mm. even though he was slain from the mm. foundations of the earth. Mm. Where was he when Abel, who had given him a proper sacrifice, was being killed? Mm. Why do you seem to come after the fact? Eh? Yeah. Why do always? you seem not Okay, really? not always, but most times but God... But if you look at that story, he once <laughs> came before. That sin is crouching at your door. Yeah. If yeah. you look at all everything that happens, there's a warning that always comes before. Mm. We can't deny that mm. we are always warned mm. before. Mm. He actually is screaming, but we have silenced our spirits mm. from mm. hearing. Mm. But when you get to that place, I promise you, only God can pick you up. Yeah. Only I've yeah. watched God. I've been through enough situations. I think for me, what, the last one being the most dramatic of my life. Mm. And it took god raising people around me to pray yeah. even with those i did not know and it took them praying for for me to get back to the place yeah. where i said okay now i realize there's no middle ground yeah it's either this or it's that all oh, the devil loves to play the moment you tell god sit back all oh, the devil loves that <laughs> Oh, he loves that so much. He will make He's the author every, of that game. Yeah. Oh my God, he'll say, you know what? He'll sell you every lie, yeah. every lie, yeah. and you will believe it yeah. because you're out of cover. Mm. 
And being out of that cover is one of the most dangerous things. Mm. So God picks you up. He may allow people to come beside you and pick you up. Mm. He may send you. He may come himself. I mean, some people have had angels in their room. Yeah, yeah. He may come in so many ways. He may remind you of a scripture. He may do anything. But in all that he does, he will never, ever leave you or yeah. forsake you. Yeah. But to the mentoring question, mentoring is a is a passionate topic for me. It mm. really is. It mm. really is. Because, first of all, I think I... I accidentally mentored, I was accidentally mentored. I don't think it was very intentional, honestly. But I think mentorship, the easiest way to describe mentorship is to walk with someone, yeah. to walk with someone, not just yeah. in their hardest moments, yeah. but to walk with them through the journey of life. Yeah. I think it's important because there are many people who have gone ahead of you yeah. who will help you avoid certain things. Yeah. There are also people who will call you out because you need to be called out. Yes. Uh, then I think it's important because it brings out purpose. I think the thing about woman, when they call a woman a helper, I love this. I discovered this recently. Mm -hmm. So when they, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When, when I you see how you light up when you even talk about it. So please. So when you say <laughs> helper, at first I used to think, mm, helper. Mm -hmm. What so, am I helping? If I'm who never going to be married. Helping? So who are we helping? You know, because for people, people make it in form of, 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 um, my wife and yes, husband yes yes gender roles yeah wife and husband and then i so studying the scripture recently and uh, i the scripture begins from a place of why god created us which is purpose mm -hmm. and then he gave and gave, gave us rulership dominion and all these things and mm -hmm. then he gave us commands on what to do yeah. and what to eat and etc but when he creates woman and he says to adam i have made you a suitable mm -hmm. helper mm -hmm. I always asked, what was he what was she going to help him do? Name the animals. He had done that. Uh, there was no cooking because we're not eating meat. <laughs> so the plants could be eaten the way they were. Yeah. So what exactly? When people say kelping, there was no cooking for Eve. Mm. Honestly, there were all these things that we sort of have put aside and said yeah, we're helping. They are, yeah, they are mm -mm. what we are helping the men do. Mm -mm. Mm. I don't see it in Genesis. Mm -hmm. I don't see us. I don't see Eve cooking. Mm -hmm. I, well, at least I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't see because one. Uh, funny enough, we're not eating meat at the time. Mm -hmm. We're eating plants. Mm -hmm. That was the command. Um, the, you don't see these things that we have tagged as helping. Mm -hmm. So when the scripture says helping, what did it mean? Mm -hmm. Suitable helper. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to the beginning. You see that God creates man for a certain purpose. For a purpose. Yes. So what's and for that purpose role? to be fulfilled, he needs a helper who is the woman to help so him fulfill purpose, the purpose. So yeah. your role as a helper is to bring purpose out in yeah, people. Yeah. It is your role to bring purpose out mm. in people. Mm. When I discovered that, mm. I said, Whoa, wow. So my role is to bring purpose, not just, mm. and, and, I went, and you know they keep tagging you to the Holy Spirit because he's also described as the helper. Yes. But he doesn't help you because he's cooking for you. Mm. He doesn't help you because he's doing things mm. for you. He's whispering he things brings to out your ear. The purpose of God in your life. Yes, yes. That wow. is a that very is key profound. role. It is very key it role is. for any woman. It's the most important yeah. role. Very key igniting role. purpose is not a thing that just happens accidentally. Mm. Yeah. So why women in this world? Yeah. Your role is to bring out purpose. Mm. You have the you have the unique opportunity to bring forth life. Mm -hmm. You bring forth both female and male. Mm. You bring out purpose in both. Mm. You actually dictate more than you think. Mulide. Mm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Dana, we are wrapping up yes. because I know that you and I can talk forever, but I don't want it to be that. Lo I, I, it's juicy. I know it's really nice, and we could hear all this wisdom forever. She's my mentor, so I, I yeah, I get to hear all these things all the time. She's the one who keeps me on the spiritual journey. <laughs> In case you have been dance. wondering, <laughs> this is who makes sure that I do not be uh, go astray. Anyway, plus the Holy Spirit and God Himself chasing me. But James, what am I saying? Anyway, Diana, Diana, ah, let's come back. So, last last question, really, about voice, because you talked about hearing God and knowing that He's speaking, and also hearing the devil mm -hmm. and no Him confusing us. This voice of God, how do, because the Bible says that my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Now, if I don't know that I am really the sheep, but I'm just following. Anyway, I won't even ask the question on sheep. I want to ask a question about knowing God's voice. Yeah. How do because you know there are people who are out <laughs> there who are even saying God even speaks, yes, as in, 
like he yeah. comes and whispers to me like I'm talking to you right now or as in so what's that KB? <laughs> How do you know my voice? I've I've listened to it over and over. I I've gotten used, I've tuned my ear mm. to, to hear it and I know that I can tell you apart. Mm. Mm. If I'm in another room, can you know that it's Miss Speaking? Of course. <laughs> I think it's just that simple. I think it's absolutely that simple at the end of the day. The more you are led and you walk with God, mm -hmm. you're going to know his mm -hmm. voice. Now, God, there are things that, of course, will differentiate for you. God mm -hmm. cannot lie. Mm -hmm. He's not man that he should lie, mm -hmm. the son of man that he should change his mm -hmm. mind. Uh, the things about him, he's peaceable, he's mm -hmm. peace-loving, mm -hmm. he'll lead you. So there are things that, of course, you will distinguish from. Mm -hmm. If anything is good, praiseworthy, trustworthy, mm -hmm. all that is God. Mm -hmm. But the way to know his voice is to walk with, with him. him spend time in the word because he repeats his word mm. he repeats his word spend time comes by hearing <laughs> hearing, hearing by the word. word so read so repeat and hear the word. And, mm. allow allow read the word because the holy spirit will repeat the mm -hmm. word the mm -hmm. holy spirit is also the voice mm -hmm. of god uh walk you having people who um, who are who are mentors or people who are spiritually over you even just people that you meet when the, you can tell by that when they speak a word over you because there'll be a witness in your mm -hmm, spirit mm -hmm. and that will come from it will always line up with the word at mm -hmm, the end of the day mm -hmm. the easiest way to know god's voice is to walk with him mm -hmm. disciplines those ones that are the non-negotiable where yeah. we started yeah. non-negotiable yeah. those non-negotiable ones are the ones we should concentrate on mm -hmm. because over time as you know the way the child knows a mother's voice mm -hmm. knows a father's voice mm -hmm. without opening their eyes mm -hmm. over time it's because they have they have spent time mm -hmm. with the person, mm -hmm. so they know mm -hmm. and they can differentiate. Mm -hmm. The enemy whispers, and enemy's things are always destructive. They are always questioning. Mm -hmm. Did the script? Did the Lord actually say, yeah. "Do not eat"? Yeah. Yeah. Did He actually say, "You will not die"? Yeah. Yeah. So anything that questions the yeah. authority of God, yeah. anything that questions the sovereignty of God, mm -hmm. is definitely not God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of food for thought, because cause, yeah, I, I, I also feel like so, some, sometimes we are you're like, oh God, give me a brain to question things, and so I have to question, I have to use it, but yeah. You're that, either that, slave to righteousness, <laughs> or... Ah, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there. So finally, finally, finally. Uh, Madam Honorable... Oh dear uh, his God. Her Excellency, oh the dear. Vice President of the Uganda Law Society. Oh gosh, I can't even and get to that. just Diana, <laughs> just Diana. I like what Miles Munro says. <laughs> if we need to put titles before you, then you're not probably worth it. If we, if we, if we call him Peter, John, Jesus, uh -huh. the, and we're not saying Apostle. Apostle. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing this hard, because really, I like it, first of all, it's work. going to take so long for me to get used to that. No, no, her just excellence. Diana will do. Diana. Yeah. It's even strange. Like, because <laughs> ordinarily I don't even call you Diana, but yes. Diana. Uh, one, one, thi one thing I want you to end, end with is your routine, your rituals, oh your, your, what, the things that you do to stay fit with God. Mm. Because I, I know I work out, uh, I, I have cheated for <laughs> a while, but I do, I do, I do. Yeah, and, and, and the same way uh, we, we've been having conversations around exercising the mind, exercising the body. H how do you exercise your spirituality mm -hmm. and what are those things that you do that the people listening and watching us can learn from mm -hmm. and maybe practice on their own. And I know that we all practice our salvation differently, but there are things that cut across that, that those disciplines that you talked about that are non-negotiable. What are those things that you do? in the midst of your busy schedule, because I know you're a very busy woman. You run so many outfits, you yeah. wear so many hats. So where do you, how do you get the time, but also what rituals do you do to keep you grounded in God? Yeah. So I think uh, I have become jealous about certain things in my life. Mm. Um, I do my best to try and be up in the hour of 5.30 to 6.15. 
So from 5.30 to about 6.15. I'm not a morning person. So um, now I feel like your tone is not nice. No, you see, I, just, <laughs> I said that until I had so much responsibility and I could not find any more time. Mm. So I do my best. I try. I really, really try. Mm. I, it's something I, I actually struggle with, but I mm. try. Mm. Because I want to guard my morning. Mm. I love to guard my morning. Mm. Because it sets the tone for the day. Mm. And I think the more leadership roles you get, the more you realize you you need to depend need on God. To, yeah. And so from 5.30 to about 6.15, uh, I am in prayer. Then I get ready. And then when I get into the car, a few minutes to 7 to, from, from that moment to 8. And, and like, unless there's a morning meeting that's urgent, mm -hmm. from that uh, to about 8, I am in Bible study and sermons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, Bible study and sermons. So my morning is more it's or less more covered than with, than with you know, structured the presence with that. of God. Yeah. Mm. I need you people, when you realize what you carry, you had better fall at the feet of God. Moody day, you people. So mm. when you carry, you know, it's, it's, it's just the weight you of you're carry carrying greatness. an institution. No, you're carrying when institutions. You carry people. You carry women. You carry, yes. you carry, oh my God, you cannot do it with with just giving just less. walking through yeah. life yeah so i do that i i uh during the day when i get a moment as much as possible especially when i'm at my desk you will find worship music on mm. as i as i you've even seen me today you'll find worship music <laughs> on every time i sit in my car there's either someone or there's worship music on so if i'm driving that time is never wasted mm. for me it's it's definitely worship music yeah. on or yeah. it's a someone and um, I've gone back to the place where I do crazy fasts, mm -hmm. yeah, because I need God. I found fasting is healthy as well. With, uh, so, mm -hmm. More than the health benefit, <laughs> I found just I'm just coming out of a fast, and uh, I found that I, I thought I'd go back to my routine before, but something about the fast changes you. Mm. Because ordinarily, and I'm not saying it's bad, ordinarily, I would have run for Netflix. Yeah, I had a problem. Yesterday, as I tried, I said, I can't do this. It was suddenly felt that, oh my God, I I'm can't put the things I used to do anymore. Yeah. That is clean. Because I, when, I, when I took time to fast, I said, I'm not going to defile myself. So I'm not doing movies, I'm not doing series, I'm not doing music, I'm mm -hmm. not doing TikTok, I'm not doing. I'm not saying they are bad, mm. you do you, but the, I chose yeah. to just clean out the yeah. vessel. And so I thought when I was coming back, it was going to be easy. <laughs> I found that something had changed. And now I'm wondering, do I cancel my plan? Do I stick to it? What do I do? You know? But the, the, it's like stretching a muscle. Yeah. It's like stretching a muscle. You're yeah. killing your body. <laughs> You're not dying. You're stretching. I'm beating my flesh and making yeah. it subject to me, who's yeah. the spirit man. Yeah. And so for me, it's important because you're, cl you're able to hear and distinguish the voice of God clearly. Mm -hmm. A leader who doesn't fast is in trouble. Mm. A leader who never spends a lot more time in prayer is mm. in trouble. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you need God to mm. carry that people. Mm. Mm. And so for me, that, that uh, um, I also try as much as possible to read books. Yes that help me that I try, yeah, yeah. as much as possible but i also have so many routines i lead bible study on monday i did i i, I am engrossed in so many <laughs> spirits i lead bible study yeah, i run yeah. the men women mentorship program at church which is uh, which is very spiritual so mm. there's a spiritual guide that will come up with i edit devotionals for church uh, at some point i i wow you're a busy woman <laughs> So I, I soak myself so that the word is never departed, yeah. prayer is never yeah. departed, yeah. fasting is never yeah. departed. And I surround myself with people who push me first. And I've also, I have found for me that in this time of, 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 of great leadership, yeah. that there's that one, two people who need to pray over you. Yeah. Not just at a distance, yeah. but they're constantly praying over you. Mm. So my week is always filled with that one person who, after I've debriefed, they're praying me through something. Mm -hmm. eh. So now you've never told me about this debrief. <laughs> when uh, we shall fight after this. What? <laughs> oh. Anyway, we shall not fight on television. <laughs> what, what? Anyway, I am grateful. I am, um, I feel 
I feel edified just yeah. talking to you and I hope that everybody that's watching and listening to us has been edified. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your God story. Thank you for allowing us to tap into how you vibe God yeah. and, and how he vibes you because it's important to us because we learn we learn that way. And a big congratulations from the Kweshunga team Thank upon you. your recent election we support you we love you we are cheering you on we shall be some of those people in your corner praying for you to yeah. succeed because when women win we all win yeah and 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 this is our win <laughs> so i am also in a way related to the vp chair because <laughs> the vp is my friend and now she's your friend because i have hosted her anyway you guys she said one very important thing that I, I i took out of this whole big conversation there are many 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 things but a leader who does not spend time in the presence of god is wasting time how often do you spend time in the presence of god whether it be in prayer in the word in fasting how are you doing it how are you doing it Go out there this week as you question God and spend some time with God. Allow him to vibe you and feel free to vibe him. See you next time. Bye-bye.